to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul lifting messages, faith based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. The Bible says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the begotten of grace and truth. Hallelujah. The word became flesh. Please back up to verse 1, 1 verse 1. Same John. who we'll read the first three verses. It says, in the beginning was the word. Now please pay attention. The Bible tells us a very powerful information about that word. That the word sustains within itself an ability to become anything and appear and dwell with men. The word became flesh. The word flesh there means it had a material expression. That the word of God, invisible, can have a material expression and we can see whatever it is that it becomes. Very powerful. Now the Bible says in the beginning, when there was nothing, that word was there. And he says, the word was with God, and the word was God. Verse 2 says, the same was in the beginning with God. I'd like you to read verse 3, very powerful. It says, all things were made. Hold on. All things, including what you are looking for, including what you are praying for, it tells you that the central raw material for everything that is ever manifest is the word of God. The Bible did not say all things were brought about, maybe like the word escorting it, they were made by him. Like saying, this meal was prepared by this chef. That means it's not like the woman just bought it, she made it, combined all the ingredients that produced that food. Until she did it, there was no food anywhere. But she pieced together the ingredients. So he says, all things, please keep that scripture there, were made by him. And without him, that means outside of his influence, was not anything made that was made. That means anything at all you see that was made, whether it admits or not, the word of God is the influence that sponsored that manifestation. From every life to every destiny, every great person is made by the word of God. In fact, there is a name that God is called that not many people know and use it. He's called the maker. The psalmist says, I will lift up my eyes onto the hills. Then he asked a question. He said, from whence cometh my help? He says, my help cometh from the Lord, the maker. It's not only heaven and earth he made. He can make anything. He's called the maker. He can make a weak person to be strong. He can make a failure to become a success. That means every time there is need for a change of state, you need the maker. The maker of the heavens and the earth, but also the maker of every destiny. Are we together now? This is very important. So the Bible says in John 1, 3, that all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. All things were made by him. By the privilege of God's grace, I have had the honor of experiencing in my own life and as I have ministered the word of God, the supernatural in various manifestations and our fathers and the men of God will tell you they have experienced the power of God. Now, the average believer is not in ignorance 
as to the fact that there is such a reality called the supernatural we'll get to that shortly but many believers do not understand the dynamics of making it consistent in their lives so if it happens it just happened that we give glory to god but he's saying that this is a realm that can become your perpetual habitation and the goal of this conference is not just for us to experience the supernatural but that we lay hold on eternal life the truths that will make it become our habitation are we together now yes so it's important for you to know what you came to experience on one hand you came to experience the supernatural in its fullness but more than that experience you came to be equipped with the knowledge that it takes to manifest the supernatural not as trial and error but then to gain mastery are we together now yes so the bible says all things were made by him the word write this down please the supernatural i would always call it is an interplay between the word of god and the spirit of god please write that down that the supernatural is an interplay between the word of god and the spirit of god hallelujah now there are two basic platforms for learning anything number one is religion religion attempts to capture realities that are beyond the realm and the scope of science and then the second platform of course is science science works on logic it works on laws it works on principles is that true it works on hypotheses that later become theory it's an attempt to understand our environment and any dimension that is higher than the realm of science meaning it does not conform to the sequence of logic it will now take another agency like religion to help explain i give you an instance uh, based on scientific principles one plus one should be two one plus one cannot become three under normal scientific circumstances is that true but then science discovered that there are possibilities in this realm that cannot they do not seem to conform to the normal sequence of logic for instance a woman getting pregnant without a man now if it happened in the realm of the spirit will wave it away but it happened physically anything that happens physically can be explained are we together so how does a woman take in to a real baby not just a spirit a real baby that was born and yet a man did not participate are we together so all through scripture and even in our day to day it seems like there has been a conflict between science and let me call it spirituality if i'll use that 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 many philosophers who had walked upon the earth postulated different theories they got to a point where they were stuck in their research and they didn't hide it that they explored their wisdom and intellect and got to a point where they knew that there is an explanation but science does not sustain the variables to now explain those realities the scientists that we celebrate almost every one of them left with question marks telling us that there is continuity to knowledge but that science was limited are we together now yeah so the bible says that the word was with god that immediately tells you that it was not in this visible realm the word of god is so powerful because it sustains the ability to find expression in any realm there are things that cannot find expression in certain realms based on our knowledge of dimensions even physics agrees with that but the bible tells us that right from heaven or where god was that all the realms that the word of god is not disadvantaged in any realm if i jump inside water i cannot breathe normally i'm in trouble because that is not my natural habitat is that true i will need an agency to help me survive that ecosystem 
If I am in the air and the plane stops moving because I am not a bird, I am in trouble. He's giving you an information about the word that wherever the word finds itself, that dominion is exact and intact. That whether the word of God is in the realm of the spirit, in another planet, in another galaxy, in the earth, He's saying that the word of God is not threatened by dimensions. You, until you understand this about the word of God, you will not be able to believe what was said. Are we together? We're examining the potency of the word. All things, by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth. Then he says, visible and just because a thing is invisible does not mean it is not real. Visible and invisible are relative statements based on the optical quality of whoever is the reference. Are, are you getting what I'm saying now? So the concept of visible and invisible is a relative statement. For instance, there are microorganisms within this place. Do you agree with me? Science agrees. But they are invisible. But their effect is real. Is that true? When you stand, naturally speaking, you stand someone who, near someone who has a flu, you don't see anything coming into you. And you just leave, believing that nothing happened. And two days later, under normal natural circumstances, you are down with a flu. Something was happening. Just because it was invisible did not mean it is unreal. Do you know what that means? So when God says you are a champion, you don't allow your eyes betray you. There is a realm of reality beyond what you are seeing. Listen, we are taking a journey and I hope that we are following carefully. Because science and our natural living has trained us to only agree with what our eyes can see. It is, a, it is, a, it is the pathway to defeat. Because every time God calls you, he calls you based on what his eyes have seen, not your eyes. And there is a problem because when we talk about the eyes of God, we don't mean this. The entirety of God is light. So God does not need to go into your future. No, he's alpha, omega. Power did not create the word. Power was part of the many resources that came out of the world. Look at it there. All things were created by him and for him. That means true power is a derivative of the world. It is not power that brings the world. It is the world that brings power. Please, you have to understand this. There are many believers who downplay the word of God in search for power. And this is why we get it wrong. The Bible says all things were created by him. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18. Apostle Paul again is teaching us that while we look not at the things which are seen. Is that in your Bible? But the things which are not seen. Help me. He says, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are unseen are eternal. Keep that scripture there. So he teaches us something now that under a certain condition and under a certain kind of spiritual training, you can look at both things that are seen and the things that are unseen. Because he's talking of looking here. That while we look not at the things that are seen, but we look at the things that are unseen. Just because it is unseen does not mean you, um, there is a possibility to still look at it. Hmm. We can look at the things that are seen. We can look at the things that are unseen. That's why somebody can begin to rejoice and dance whereas there is no physical evidence and he'll tell you I've seen something. Don't you laugh at him and say he's wasting his time. The Bible tells us that do not think it is antichrist for someone to tell you I have seen something that is not yet manifest. We are building now. I, I, am I still with us? Because tonight you are going to look at many things. 
in the name of Jesus. Tonight, God will, God will train your heart. Some of you, while you are sitting, you will be looking at a duplex whereas you are in one room. And people will say, where is it? For someone, you are sitting down and physically, maybe you are in the hospital, you are seeing a patient dying, but you will start looking at someone running around in old age. And they say, where did you see the healthy version of that person? Paul said, while we look, From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same your name is to be alone hallelujah please bring for me someone that shouts right now loud under the anointing i just saw something but i want to help you understand something i just saw like wind and a loud this is coming on someone now please look at this I know that I'm using that to teach you how do you stand here and say something is going to happen and then it happens is it true that I saw it before it happened listen carefully please don't get used to some of this nonsense that happens around the Pentecostal circles and then think everybody is just doing no 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 there are disciplined people who are teaching you the ways of God so that you don't mix what we are doing and think this is just some childish things uh -uh. there are people who have met God I want you to understand something how do you stand here and say somebody is going to shout on that this is not so if it is if it's just joke do it and see if it works that means I can say in the name of Jesus your tomorrow and when I'm speaking to your tomorrow you will no longer think I'm guessing this is not just a man of God speaking. If God can answer you within seconds, what is the dynamics? So I can look at you and say in the name of Jesus, let your life change. Let me prophesy to someone in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the son of the living God. Everything that has made you cry, from January to June, I stand in the name of Jesus on the grace upon our Father and I declare weeping comes to an end. Weeping comes to an end. Sit down. Sit down. Hallelujah. Madam, I'm seeing oil being poured on you. Help her. Help that woman. You see, let me tell you this. Just help her. The Holy Spirit is doing something in her life. All you see is not all there is. What separates people is their ability to see realities and to transport those realities from a dimension. I'm not, I'm not talking of the lady you are dealing with. The, black, the lady with black. She's the one I'm seeing oil coming on. This one that is shaking now just have the one by her side I'm just seeing like oil being poured on her listen Satan has manipulated some of these things but let me tell you the truth genuine authority in the kingdom is based on what you have seen Faith is not just based on what you have heard alone. Habakkuk said, I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower that I will see what you will say. More than hearing what you will say, I will see. Is God speaking to us? Who is roti me? Rotimi. I'm hearing a name, Rotimi. We're going to, I'll make sure that we're not distracted. 
I'm hearing a name, Rotimi. I don't know who that person is, but the Lord is turning around. The Lord is turning that person's entire family in a very, very supernatural way. That's why the person came, wrote to me. I pray that we'll have the time so that I can speak over your life. But the Lord is showing me a gentleman wrote to me. That's the name that I'm hearing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we blessed? So the Bible says all things were made by him. So when you see something happen in my life that is not affordable in the earth realm, don't be surprised. Hey. Know where it came from. Hey. Listen. Hmm. If I enter a restaurant and you see me come out of the restaurant with say pizza or whatever it is, you will not be surprised because you saw where I entered. A restaurant should produce food. If I enter a restaurant and I come out with a car, something is wrong because a restaurant does not produce a car. So the next time you, if I see what you are carrying, I must check where you are coming out from. Hey. Are we together now? <laughs> you can't see someone coming out with a plate of food from a restaurant and be surprised. That is not a sign and a wonder. It is a natural sequence of things. It's what the restaurant was made for. If a student goes to school and comes out with a degree or a certificate, you are not surprised. That's what the school is made for. But if you see a woman who has not gone to school with no support anywhere, in one month is given a car and a house. Mama, where did this come from? Because this sequence does not exist in the earth realm. You have defied many things, the law of process. You are, who helped you? Where is the stranger that helped you? I'm walking now. You can't clap for me because I'm, uh, that I'm walking. It is, a, it is, it call, it, it is part of it, the natural sequence of things. But if I begin to fly now, some will run, some will snap it and put it online, some will say this man maybe is a demonic person. Some will say this is the great power of God. Why? Because these are possibilities that are not easily given. Listen, do you know why I'm teaching you this? Because there are results you will start commanding from tonight that will have no human explanation. How does a man pick a trumpet and blow it across the globe and from nation to nation everybody likes you? If you think it is easy for everybody to like you, ask men to like you. In a cruel and a selfish world. So when the Bible begins to say things like, Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising, that for your shame you shall receive double, that where you have been deserted so that no man would pass through you, that you will become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. Now you see where our father draws this grace from that he can stand over your life and say in the name of Jesus may doors open and you will hear people come to testify that I had no business getting a job by the natural sequence of things. Please sit down. Let me begin to tie a few things. My spirit is fired up tonight. Everybody said the word of God. This Bible you see, this is a notebook produced by a publishing house. And there are people in that publishing house who are not even born again. Listen carefully. They read this all the time by reason of their work, but it does not change them. Are we together? They, they supervise, there is a quality control unit. There are people who producing this is a business. And just because they are around something that was God that said does not mean they have contact with the word of God. Because there are many people who do not know what the word of God is. Now that I've told you what the word of God can do, I want to define for you what it is. So that you will find out whether what you have been holding on to is really the word of God. Because if it is the word of God, the Bible says all things can be made by it. So the reason why nothing has been made from your own word of God, we need to check it. 
If you've been swallowing a drug and you call it Panadol and it's not treating you, the next time you go to a doctor, he'll say, go and bring what you call Panadol. Let me check. It can look like Panadol. It can have the color of Panadol. But then when they break it and check it, you may find out it is fake. Is God helping someone? What is the word of God? Because you see, ladies and gentlemen, please look at me. As at the time the apostles were writing this, I hope you know they didn't have anything that they hold every day and move around with. This was the aftermath of their exploits that was put together. Church and Bible history tells us, are we still Christians? So, as at the time they were saying the word of God is quick and powerful, what did they mean? Because they were not given access to anything. In fact, the scriptures that they would read, the Bible would say that Jesus came to the temple. The scroll would be given to him. He would read it and close it and return it back. What is the word of God? Is it this? Or is it what you say? Is it a statement? Is it a verse? Is it a letter? Is it a charm? What exactly does the Bible call the word of God? The word of God is what builds the life of our father today. The word of God is what built and is still building RCCG. Because every time it is the word, it makes. You can know it is the word by what it is making. So if you've been holding on to something for years and you say, I'm holding on to the word of God, and it is not making you or making anything around your life, we have a right to vet it from the authority of scripture so that you don't deceive yourself believing that I've been holding because there are many believers what they are calling to be the word of God is not the word of God are we together let me say something that will I hope it doesn't trouble you <laughs> Satan is standing with Jesus after his temptation and Satan is quoting scriptures so does he have it hidden in his heart? It came out of him. Do you agree with me? But was he transformed by it? Yet the scripture, was it wrong? So he went that far to even take it inside him and even bring it out. Same memory verse. What level of diligence is greater than that? That you can bring a word, a, a verse, a correct verse and speak to Jesus. And yet that is Satan carrying that scripture. Don't worry, I'm a good pilot who will land safely. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You, you can trust it. If you feel confused, though, I will not leave you that way. Don't, you can be sure of that. We are going to land safely in a way that gives God glory. Are we together? Because there are many people who would tell you, I kept confessing, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not die, I won't be sick, and yet it looks like the realm of the spirit has no honor for what they are saying. Now, I'm not saying confession is wrong. There's something I want to prove to you. Are we together? And yet another person will stand and say in the name of Jesus, may God bless you, and in an instant, in fact, two people can come and say, may God bless you. And you who is saying amen, you really know that nothing is going to happen to you. And then another person says, may God bless you. And you know from your spirit that something came upon you. That means the word of God is more than speaking. Is that true? It's more than just speaking or saying verses. Because Satan said it. In fact... If it is true that the word of God is, he said, thy word have I hidden in my heart that I will not sin against you. The chief sinner, Satan himself, the word of God is part of what was inside him. And yet there was nothing righteousness and nothing holiness and nothing God within him. If it is this title you want us to explore, then this is what we are doing. The supernatural. You have to understand the word of God. I've said a few things about it. 
Number one, that, it, that the dominion of the word of God is consistent in any realm. The, the dominion of the word of God does not deplete with dimensions. Are we together? The word of God does not need any assistance from any realm. It is self-sufficient and equally potent. It does not matter what realm. And then I said that power, according to scripture, power is a derivative of the word of God. It is not power that brings the word of God. No, the word of God, power is a child of that word. Are we together? So now we're examining if that word is so powerful, what is it? Look up, please. For as long as you think the word of God is just scripture, or the word of God is just a writing that was captured in 66 books. The Bible personifies the word of God. Listen carefully. Every time it says all things were made, it never said made by it. It says made by him. All things were made by him. A person. In the beginning, he says, was the word. And that the word was with God and then he defines for us what the word of God is here that many of us have not seen what is the word he says the word was and is God that means the only thing the word cannot do is what God cannot do so if for any reason you doubt the word it is a reflection of your lack of confidence in God. Because everything I have told you about the word is the same expression for God. That God's dominion is consistent in any realm. Consistent in any dimension. God does not go to heaven or on earth or under the earth. The Bible talks about his sovereignty and his authority. Hallelujah. Now listen very carefully. The word that is translated, the Greek word W-O-R-D, that is translated word, is the word logos. And the word logos means the thoughts of a man that seeks expression. So when you talk about the word, it means the thoughts of a man. Are we together? But that the thoughts, not just the thoughts that are resident, and the, the thoughts that crave to find expression. That's what we call logos. So when you see the word word, it is the logos of God. And then the Bible says that that word, when he manifested physically, a name was given to him. Listen carefully. So the word of God, when he appeared upon the earth, a name was given to him. And that name is Jesus. So Jesus is not just the word of God. Jesus is that word. That anywhere you see the word of God is talking about that person. The person who was with God. The person who was God. When he appeared upon the earth, he was given a name. Jesus. Are we still together? Then the Bible now goes further to tell us that Jesus came to demonstrate the potency of the word. Now Jesus began to show us the possibilities of the word of God. We have a right to doubt whether he really is the word of God except by the performance that we we'll see. So Jesus goes to a man who had been sick for 38 years at Bethesda. Remember the story? And then the man beckons on him and he says, well, what do I do for you? Can I help you? And he says, I've been lying down here 38 years. If it is true that he is the word of God, he should be able to demonstrate the power of that word, dominion even over time. He lifts that man and defies that natural process. Because ordinarily the man, if Jesus were to help him, he would have put somebody to stand close. So that if the angel moves the water, he will push him quickly. But he said, no, what, I am the word. Uh, I don't depend on factors. I create the factors. I can choose as an act of my will and my love. Are we together now? Do you know why I'm teaching you this? Because the law of process is a very potent law that works in our world. 
But let me tell you, when you encounter the word legitimately, you can defy the law of process. That, that have you heard that in one day a nation is born? But it says that as soon as Zion travails, she shall put forth a son. It means that it is possible tomorrow by this time, someone can return for this program with your hands on your head wondering and saying, see what the Lord has done. That from night till morning, he turned my morning into dancing and my sorrow to joy. May that be your case in Jesus' name. Now watch this. When Jesus came, he came to validate the power of the word of God and to prove that indeed he was that word. Now, please look at me. I want to introduce a very powerful concept now. Let's recap everything we said about the word. That there is no impossibility with the word. Is that true? That if it is the word of God, it has dominion and equal value in every realm. Now Jesus shows up as the word of God. Do we agree that Jesus is the word of God? The shock, pastor, is that we see Jesus in carrying out his ministry. There were some miracles that could not happen. Ah, now we have a problem here. I thought the word of God should be able to do everything. Do you agree with me? We see the word of God creating the heavens and the earth. The Bible says that word was with God. Now Jesus comes as the incarnate, that word. And Jesus stands before people and he's limited. There were some things he could not do. Ah, he's showing us something from his limitation. Why the word does not work in our lives. Listen carefully. Hmm. The Bible is not ashamed. And afraid to let you know that even though the word was working, he went to certain cities and prayed for the sick and they could not be healed. So it, I'm not surprised that it is not working for you. It then means that as powerful as the word of God is, it does not work in every condition. It may work in every realm. It may work in every dimension. However, it is activated by certain conditions. Are you following me, please? That the word of God, as powerful and as potent as it is, there is a condition that can be created that that word will be limited. And many of us, Satan has deceived us. He tried to stop you from getting the word since he found out you could not, he now created the condition that makes the word of God of non-effect. So that it is possible that you are carrying scripture, quoting scripture, reading scripture, and yet you will not see what the Bible says the word should do. Jesus is in your heart. You are meditating on scripture. You believe what it can do, and yet it does not happen. Please pray in one minute while you are seated. Say, Lord, open my eyes. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. All of the overflows everywhere. Cry for the opening of your eyes. Pray in one minute. Shalagra supahasibe yadara. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salas kade bash kana kata branda kate katos kate branda kata pakotos koto breka teke ne kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.